Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to Celebrate with L.A. Williams. My name is L.A. Williams, and I am so honored and excited to bring to you this very, very special episode. Today, we are celebrating the one and only Mr. Drew Shade. Drew, how are you, my brother? <laughs> I'm alive. I'm breathing on schedule, brother. I can't yes. complain. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for being here. Before Thank I get you for into having it, me. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's my honor. Before I get into a deeper introduction of you, Drew, I want to talk a mm -hmm. few seconds about what Celebrate is and what it means to me, if that's okay. That's more than fine. Celebrate is a manifestation of a moment I had uh, when I was a young theater student at Alabama State University. I it was my first semester on campus, my first time ever in a theater watching a play. I knew nothing about drama, theater, acting, any of it. Um, and I had gone over there to the building to see a production of a play called Phaedra by Jean Racine. And it was directed by Dr. Tommy Stewart, who was the professor there. And it was one of those experiences where I was completely swept over by what was happening, right? I knew from that moment, the lights came up on the stage. I was like, this is where I belong. I have found myself, all the things. Um, and I also knew at the end of that show, that performance, and by the way, I went back every show after that. I was at the matinees, the night shows, the whole weekend I was there. The people thought I was an usher. Um, and I, I kept going back because I also felt this overwhelming desire to say thank you to everybody involved in that production. I wanted to find everybody who was written in the program and be like, thank you for changing my life. Thank you for inspiring me. Thank you for giving me something to, to, to look to and, and aspire to. And, and so that was really the genesis of Celebrate. Cut to some years later, I'm living in New York City, and I have the divine inspiration to turn that energy into an interview platform where I wanted to sit down with some of those people whose work has really inspired me and say thank you to them, really show my gratitude for them, and also, you know, kind of listen to them talk about some of their inspirational moments or some of those transformative moments. Um, and so I began doing that with some artists, and here we are, 2022. As you know, we're like living in this pandemic, we're pulling through, we're surviving, we're doing all the things, we're trying to find healthy and better ways to come back to theater and all the mm -hmm. things. And I made a personal commitment last fall um, to go back out and see shows and really show up for the people who I feel are on the front lines of all of this, um, really trying to um, um, pave the way for us to come back. And um, I would be super remiss, <laughs> mm. Drew. Yeah. I can't talk about the inspiration I feel yeah. to do celebrate without thinking about you. Mm. Oh, I'll tell you. you why. Drew, you are such an inspiration because with Broadway Black, this incredible platform that you started and that you continue to grow and build right in front of our eyes, you have been a great example. Mm. Mm of what it means to celebrate artists, to uplift our community, <laughs> to show the beautiful side of us. And every time that I've ever come in contact with you, I feel the love from you, the love for the work and the love for the people. And I thought, as I sit down with some of the folks here in 2022, I wanna make sure I have a conversation with you to say a couple of things. One, thank you, Drew, for all the work that you do. It is not lost on me. You know that I know what it is. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, for what you are doing for all of us. We see you. I see you and I thank you. I also wanted to celebrate you, Drew, because I know the work that it takes. I know the commitment that it takes. And you're also a beautiful artist yourself, a beautiful human being. So I wanted to say thank you as well and check in on you and just kind of hear from you and let you talk to us a little bit about your journey so that we can better understand the gorgeousness that is Mr. Drew Shade. So that was my intention by inviting you to be on today. And I just wanna say again, and I'm gonna say it a few times throughout this conversation. So get ready for me to love on you um, excessively. But Drew, I'm just so grateful for you. I really am. And again, the energy that it requires to continue something like Celebrate can only happen when you have the inspiration that comes from someone like you and from something like Broadway Black. It is not lost on me, friend. And that was the reason why uh, I wanted to invite you to be on today. I really, I really appreciate um, everything that you just said. I really do um, appreciate being seen mm -hmm. uh, and being valued in that way. Mm -hmm. It means a lot, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in, in um, doing what I've done and, and what I continue to do. It can sometimes feel thankless. And so mm -hmm. to hear a thank mm -hmm. you 
mm-hmm. is is um, is a lot. And I appreciate mm-hmm. it. Sometimes, you know, it's, it's hard to sit with that. It's hard to sit mm-hmm. with a thank you and an, an acknowledgement. Mm-hmm. Um, but I receive it. Yes, and sir. I appreciate you, brother. I really, really do. It, it means a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. And thank you. And likewise, it means a whole lot that you're here today. Yeah. Um, Drew, the way I like to start these celebrate conversations off is by celebrating the day you were born. And I love okay. that because it, it's an invitation. <laughs> it's an invitation for you to take us back as far as you want us to go um, and kind of talk to us either about your birth story or your earliest memory or just young Drew growing up. What was it like being a younger you? Tell us something. Yeah, uh, I am um, originally from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Uh, it's the second largest city in, in Indiana, but also it's still a small uh, place to come from, if you will. Mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, am a Leo born in August. I was actually a premature baby. I was supposed to be born mm-hmm. in October, but I was born mm-hmm. two months early. Oh, wow. um, and, and since that, um, since that time, uh, I, I entered into the uh, theater industry, or should say into the theater mm-hmm. arts or the art form. Uh, very early on, my mother put me in an acting class uh, when I was in like kindergarten, first grade. Mm-hmm. And, and I just took to it. It just really mm-hmm. was something that I thoroughly enjoyed mm-hmm. um, and, and became really inspired by the art form and and uh, being able to be on stage as, as any Leo uh, mm-hmm. likes to be mm-hmm. in the spotlight and likes to be, you know, seen and, and, uh, um, has charisma. I, I was that. Mm-hmm. I was that child. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I grew up in a small. You know, what I like to think of as a small town, especially c- compared to New York City. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't move to New York until I was 25. So I, I spent mm-hmm. 25 years in mm-hmm. Indiana building mm-hmm. uh, my thought process and my mm-hmm. art form and mm-hmm. my idea of what um, mm-hmm. what it could be in in mm-hmm. in, in you know a flyover state, which mm-hmm. is very different from the. Um, you know the the west coast or the east coast Mm -hmm. uh living in the midwest is is a unique experience all on its own um but i wouldn't trade it for for anything because it's brought me here Mm. i love that drew i love that you are a midwesterner as am i i love that and i feel you on a whole lot of levels Mm -hmm. Um, you know because we have a we have a um we have the what I like to say is the northern mentality with the southern hospitality yes and so we we still give um a lot of you know we still like to say hello to people when walking down the street we like to be open and warm but don't try us you know we ain't no killer but don't push me you know i'm not no killer but don't push me (laughs) right it's so true so beautifully said it's so true drew it's that's Mm -hmm. perfect um yes i love that northern mentality with the southern hospitality that's brilliant i love that um so going back just a little bit to young drew growing up i love that your mom put you in an acting class so early like you said five or six kindergarten um uh what do you think i mean i have so many questions right now the first one is did did you feel like she saw something in you and she was like we need to channel this energy or did you ask her about it or absolutely no i think that she saw that i you know just as a child i would play um i would i would act i would set up scenes i would set Mm. up uh uh you know some of my toys and i would be a Mm -hmm. businessman and i would be Mm -hmm. on the phone and acting like Mm -hmm. i'm I'm having a meeting Mm -hmm. and i would Mm -hmm. you know make her sign my uh, you know, sign my clipboard to, to schedule a meeting with me. And then I would have her wait when she came in and sit down and, and, and she would have to wait till I got off the phone. And, and then we would sit down and I would look at my papers and oh, I would shuffle God. them and, 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 you know, put them away. And I was acting, I was doing things. She, she saw the like charisma. Yeah. She yes. saw the like charisma and, a, and, and the a imagination. With, yeah. Imagination yeah. within me. And so she thought that that would be something that I enjoyed. And I really, really did. And I'm thankful for her. Mm. Uh, for mm-hmm. that experience and, and nurturing that at such a young age. Absolutely, Drew. You know, yeah. one of the things I love to do on this program is take moments to celebrate people like your mom, right? Mm-hmm. Who had the vision and the wherewithal to see the magic yeah. and, and say, I'm going to do something about it. I mean, you know, as you know, as we all know, that doesn't happen every day. There are a lot of people, especially right. young children, whose who's imagination is completely looked over. It's like, move chow, you know, sit down mm-hmm. somewhere. Um, and so kudos to your mom and celebrate. Let's celebrate her for a second. I think that's yeah, beautiful. Definitely. Now, were you the only child or talk to me a little bit about sort of growing up in the house? Was it just you and your mom or were there other people or what was that like? Well, I, um, so I have a sort of a blended family. I have okay. four sisters and two brothers. 
Okay. Uh, that is a mixture of my biological father as well as my stepfather okay. and my mother. My mother had two children, myself and my sister. And my sister grew okay. up in the house with me. Mm -hmm. um, she was the only sibling that grew up in the house with me and, and, and my parents, my stepdad and my, my mom. Um, but she was seven years older than I was. So by the time I got to middle school, she was going off to college. Mm -hmm. So pretty much I did live in, in a way that I was the only child living, mm -hmm. at, home. living um, at home. I, I did have, you know, other siblings. I have a brother that um, uh, that's been in prison since he was, you know, eighteen, and mm -hmm. and he um, uh, will be there for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. I also have, um, um, you know, sisters that that lived um, very close to me. They lived in the same town, but they lived mm -hmm. with their mothers. So those are my my biological father's um, children, and they live with their mothers. And so, actually, one of my sisters lived across the street from me for for years with her mother. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. And then I also have an older sister uh, um, from through my stepfather, and she lived in Atlanta for a long time. And then my brother Dion uh, mm. uh, lived in 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 this in the same town, um, and he worked with my father. My father owns a tire shop, so mm. my father is a, a community staple. He's also a minister, uh, mm. and he owns a, a, a tire shop, a used tire shop, and that mm. has been in his family since um, you know before he was born. His his father. Uh, owned the shop and so he, he passed it down to him and my mm -hmm. brother worked at that shop and my you know uh, rest in peace to my brother he passed a few years ago from diabetes mm -hmm. um and so yeah that's that's my my family sort of history and story and and we were a church going family we, we grew up mm -hmm. kojic uh, mm -hmm. my dad was a minister and and um yeah that that was you know when when well actually when he came into my life he was a deacon and he moved up from you know minister to a pastor and and that sort of thing and um mm -hmm. That's that was my life. It was not theater. Mm, it was church. Mm, uh, mm. Is where I, I really grew, and um, you know, my my whole compass was built. My whole moral compass was built on on the Kojic Church. Mm. Yeah. Ooh, that's so full. Thank you for sharing that, Drew. Um, I'm curious about just Fort Wayne outside of the house, and mm -hmm. especially for someone like you who had been introduced to acting classes so very early, what was the culture like in terms of the performing arts? And like, after that yeah. first acting class, did you take more classes throughout elementary school or did you go to the YMCA or how did you kind Well, of I mean, I did involved? all of the above. So like my mother mm. wanted to make sure that I was very well-rounded in culture. She's from Chicago, uh, mm. grew up in Chicago and on the mm. South side of Chicago. And so um, she wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of experience of everything. So I did mm. go to the YMCA with, with mm. the uh, public school kids. I went to um, a, a fine arts magnet school. Mm -hmm. uh, I also did a lot of community theater. Um, mm -hmm. I was a part of the youth theater where we did mm -hmm. classes on Saturdays. And then also mm -hmm. I did, we did youthful productions mm -hmm. um, uh, of different shows, you know, like Annie Jr. and, mm -hmm. and uh, Charlotte's Web mm -hmm. and those sort of things. Mm -hmm. So I grew up doing theater in that regard, but also the main, I think the main uh, thing that came into my life when I was maybe in uh, middle school uh, was a organization called Unity Performing Arts Foundation. Mm. It started off as a choir called Youth for Christ. We performed mm. at a banquet and that banquet turned into um, the, the leader of that, that choir turned that choir into an organization called Unity Performing Arts Foundation. Mm. And so I'm one of the founding members of that organization mm. uh, from Fort Wayne, Indiana. And that's mm. been about 20 years now. Mm. Uh, um, we're celebrating 20 year anniversary this year. Mm -hmm. And so that organization really uh, um, gave me the basis and the foundation of what it means to be able to present, uh, what it means to have life principles, what it means to mm -hmm. have discipline, mm -hmm. what it means to show up for yourself and mm -hmm. show up for your community beyond mm -hmm. just performing, but mm -hmm. integrating it into your everyday life and mm -hmm. how to operate from excellence. And that's where mm -hmm. really my my scope of, of uh performing and and my eye and my um critical eye comes from mm -hmm. is is mm -hmm. uh that organization my, my mentor marshall white uh mm -hmm. was everything he he accepted nothing less than excellence and always mm -hmm. you know talking about reaching back to give back and mm -hmm. and uh, making sure that you pull people up with you and and mm -hmm. giving them uh um uh giving them love but also mm -hmm. giving them critique and and mm -hmm. wanting everyone to be great and wanting everyone mm -hmm. to um, uh, perform and live up to a certain standard of excellence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so, yeah, that's that I, without that, I don't know where I would be. And so it was a, a mm -hmm. great honor and a privilege, uh, to have that happen and have that created during a time where I was really in a development state, mm -hmm. uh, in middle school, in high school, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, and following the, the, the teachings of, of my mentor, Marshall White was, uh, greatly influential to, mm -hmm. to where I am now. 
mm. especially with building a business because he you know mm. i watched him build his his organization mm. from mm. scratch mm. Uh, watched him build and and go through you know teammates and and develop structure and mm -hmm. all sorts of things. I, I learned so much that I didn't even realize I was learning at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's, that's Fort Wayne is, is um, a place that um, you wouldn't expect, you know, mm -hmm. to have such rich culture, mm -hmm. um, but it's in the nicks and crannies of, mm -hmm. of uh, the community and you can mm -hmm. find it if you're looking for it. Yeah, God. Yeah. Um, that's so juicy um, and so vivid. Thank you, Drew. Um, for yeah, sharing that. So high school, did you go to like a fancy performing arts high school or, or were no. you just still doing your outside <laughs> stuff and going to a, a regular high school? Like what was yeah, the Yeah, I of... went to, um, so, you know, I was, I was a little bit of a troubled child. I, I mm -hmm. jumped from school to school, mm -hmm. uh, throughout middle school and high school. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I had a hard time focusing and, mm -hmm. and being disciplined when it came to anything but the arts. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I went to, uh, for sixth grade, I went to a magnet school. They had um, a you know wonderful theater program. That's where I did uh, Auntie Mame, mm -hmm. and you know there were productions of To Kill a Mockingbird, and mm -hmm. um, where I learned a lot about you know theater, and 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 I learned a lot. About, I should say I learned a lot about classic, you know, the canon of theater, and mm -hmm. and doing that. And then mm -hmm. seventh grade, I went to uh, uh, a Lutheran school. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a private school. I ended up getting kicked out of there. And then my mother sent me to public school, which is like mm -hmm. the all black public school um, um, that was in our neighborhood called Village. Mm -hmm. And I went to Village and then I went to uh, another magnet school after that for my freshman year of high school, mm -hmm. uh, which was Snyder, Snyder High School. And they had a, a wonderful theater program as well. And also that's how, how I learned to uh, sing opera. Mm -hmm. I was trained in, in, in opera, in the style of opera mm -hmm. at that time. And mm -hmm. um, that gave me some rich culture, but then I, I ended up leaving that school because my mother was like, if you're going to be, you know, not getting good grades and, and getting in trouble and smoking weed, then mm -hmm. you go on to the public school. So I went mm -hmm. to the public school from there <laughs> um, going forward uh, mm. for sophomore, junior and senior year. And that was really one of the best experiences. It was all black, uh, majority black, I should say, like 95% mm -hmm. black mm -hmm. high school mm -hmm. uh, where all my teachers were black. All of the mm -hmm. students were black. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was yeah the best experience I, I, mm -hmm. I just I don't know where I would be without that mm -hmm. um, richness of culture mm -hmm. and, and the mm -hmm. care of, of the black mm -hmm. teachers and oh the care God. of our black yes. principal yes. and our administrators yeah. and yeah. Um, how they looked out for us and, yes. and how they you know schooled us and, and, yes. and molded us mm -hmm. um, and you know I had, I had white teachers but they were the they were the minority there they were the minority yeah. um, and so yeah to have that experience really shaped my entire mind mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. blackness around black mm -hmm. culture and after that mm -hmm. i went to um i ended up going to ball state university which was mm -hmm. a you know sort of more of a culture shock mm -hmm. as you get older you know i went to uh, as you know i said went to some fine art schools and things of that nature where we're more majority um you know white and there was you know a little bit of, of diversity there but uh having to having gone through three years of a majority black high school and then mm -hmm. going to a college that was, you know, a PWI, mm -hmm. a predominantly white institution was mm -hmm. a shock. And I mm -hmm. sort of just did not take well to that. I was mm -hmm. looking for all of the outside things. So I ended up mm -hmm. leaving college um, in my junior year and really mm -hmm. ended up flunking out because I just couldn't take it. Mm -hmm. um, um, I was doing everything outside of going to, to class in my program. Class, I was a right. president of BSA. I was the president of, of Trends of Essence. I was mm -hmm. uh, 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 doing all the things that were black centered and, and, mm -hmm. and trying to find black culture on the campus. Yes. And I was showing yeah. up to all those events, but I was really not uh, getting my education. But little did I know Mm -hmm. um, that for some years, you know, even prior to going to college that I had been dealing with depression and anxiety. Mm -hmm. Um, and I wouldn't find that out for years to come after for leaving college. Yeah. For, after leaving college, I, I wouldn't mm -hmm. find that out until mm -hmm. uh, many years later about mm -hmm. what I was dealing with and how mm -hmm. I was, you know, self-medicating and using mm -hmm. marijuana and, and alcohol to mm -hmm. just get to sleep at night sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was, it was a, a thing that, that mm -hmm. led me to leaving school. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm, true. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you for sharing that. I, I'm so inspired by the fact that you um, are now in a place where you can look back and see sort of mm -hmm. 
how you were moving and, and why you were moving through the things the way you were doing. I just think that's so yeah. beautiful and so important for us to, to be able to reflect on these stories and, and kind of um, see ourselves. Do you, um, so Ball State, huh? Mm -hmm. Where is Ball State University? First Muncie, of all? Indiana. It's literally 45 oh, minutes from- Oh, it's in Indiana. Yeah, 45 minutes from, from Fort Wayne. And it's and even a smaller have, town than Fort Yeah, Wayne. and did they have a theater <laughs> program? Did they have like a- BFA program or BA program, or were you majoring so, in something else? Well, no, I, I majored in musical theater. It was the only musical school theater. I, I even auditioned oh, for. So I, oh, went, nice. I majored for musical theater. I also majored in, um, I had a double major, major in musical theater and public relations with a minor in theatrical studies. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. it was a good program. It was a good program, mm -hmm. but I only had one black mm -hmm. uh, acting teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I was the only black male student at the time. Mm -hmm. Over the years, over the past 15 years, you know, the, the program has actually developed um, and gotten a lot better. Um, mm -hmm. There's there's some really great training there and some great mm -hmm. assistance there. Mm -hmm. I actually just met back up with the head of my department um, and and some of the students that are seniors there. They did a senior showcase um, as well as like a cabaret this past mm -hmm. week, and and I went to to support them and meet up with my uh, head of my department. And I'm actually considering going back to complete my degree just because it's something mm -hmm. that I. I want to accomplish. And so mm -hmm. um, we've talked about that and, and mm -hmm. uh, trying to figure out a way to make that happen while I'm still here in New York City. Um, and yeah, so it's it's a great program. Also, you know, uh, I don't know if you know Kayla Davion, Kayla Davion mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. uh, Tina. She's uh, the mm -hmm. Tina alternate on Broadway right mm -hmm. now. She also mm -hmm. um, booked Waitress right out of college. Mm -hmm. And she also did King Kong. She was the standby mm -hmm. for Christiane Pitts. Mm -hmm. um, the understudy for Christiane Pitts, and mm -hmm. uh, she's a leading lady. And so she mm -hmm. came out of the program so many mm -hmm. years after I did. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really great to see her thriving and prospering as somebody that's from the same place that I am from. Yes. Um, so the program is, is a great program. It, mm -hmm. it, you have to be, you just have to be ready for it. You have to you be have ready. To be ready. Yeah. yeah, you have to be yeah. uh, intentional and, and disciplined, mm -hmm. uh, you know, for really for any musical theater program. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, it, it's a good place. Yeah, there are two things that I'm super present to right now, Drew. Um, one is when I listen to you talk about your journey up until and through Ball State, just the mm -hmm. leadership. Like, I just I keep thinking about leadership as it pertains to you. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you talk about running things like BSA, um, which I'm assuming means Black Student Association. Right, yeah. Right, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, so I'm just I'm just tracking the fact that like there was a leader being born through all of these experiences. Yeah, even or, in college, you know, I, I um, you know, instead of doing my musical theater class and the things, I was doing concerts every year. So right. I was putting together mm -hmm. uh, like whole concerts. I was doing mm -hmm. covers of songs. I was putting mm -hmm. together a storyline with that. Mm -hmm. I was using all the resources mm -hmm. from like my mm -hmm. theater department there you know props and and costuming and and the the auditorium i would book the auditorium because it was available to me as a student i could use those mm -hmm. spaces for free mm -hmm. or for a, a major discount mm -hmm. um i was using my friends as dancers i had full mm -hmm. full-on dancers and yes. and yes. background singers and yeah. you know we were rehearsing and building a show and, and i would yes. do that every year yes. Um, yes. instead of actually That's focusing right. on my program totally. <laughs> you know and then right. also right. You know, trends of essence was the the modeling troupe on campus you know, mm -hmm. back in, you know, mm -hmm. in college, you, we, we did the, the modeling trip was a totally. thing. Like it oh, was, yes, it was a whole thing. We were yeah. serious about that thing. Oh, and yes. I came oh, in yes. and sort of revamped the, yes. the idea and the organization where uh -huh. anybody just couldn't get in. You had to audition now. You had That's to, you know, right. be able to walk in heels. You had That's to be able to right. give yes. me performance. So yes. um, that was my thing. And, you know, yeah. it, it, uh, it fueled so much joy within me. Mm. So yeah, leadership was definitely a thing that, that I grasped hold of because I liked to create. Yeah. And I wanted to um, create on on black bodies. Yeah, I, well, I love that. I love that so much. Yes, that makes so much sense considering your high school experience. And also as a person who went to an HBCU, all of those things were very alive and well for mm -hmm. us at Alabama State University. Modeling troops and all the things, yeah. marching bands, and there was yeah, a exactly. process for everything, right. and even being in the theater. Um, so that makes total sense how you um, wanted that, but also used perhaps what you learned in your high school experience and that culture that you received to like shape your college experience. And Definitely. also if it, I think it's worth saying and celebrating that like, even though we have moments in our life where we may not have completed a program, for example, or what have you, there's still so much that we learn, right? And so much that yeah. we get out of it. And the fact that I feel like a full on producer was born at Ball State, I think is absolutely makes that whole thing 
beautiful and amazing. Um, so Thank talk you. to me about, you're very welcome. You're very welcome. Um, talk to me about what the transition from leaving Ball State to whatever happened next. Did you go back home to Fort Wayne? Did you, did you go somewhere I else? I did. I did. I went back to, Ball, to Fort Wayne. I um, uh, spent some time in Indianapolis as well, living mm -hmm. with a friend of mine uh, mm -hmm. for some months throughout that summer. Mm -hmm. um, I literally left everything behind. I had mm -hmm. so much stuff in the apartment that I um, lived in at that time, but I was depressed. I was, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it was a, a deep depression and, and deep mm -hmm. anxiety mm -hmm. um, that I didn't really know what that meant mm -hmm. or what that mm -hmm. was. You know, nobody had really mm -hmm. schooled me on mental health or therapy. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was struggling for many mm -hmm. years. It was mm -hmm. hard for me to keep a job. Mm -hmm. It was hard for me to just show up for myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I ended up living back at home. I was, uh, you know, went back to what I knew, which was working in a restaurant. I had always worked in a restaurant from the time I was 16. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I knew how to work, mm -hmm. but it was difficult for me to show up for myself and difficult for me mm -hmm. just to get up and make things happen. The, the you know, like what, I, what I've uh, learned now and what I say is that my brain wasn't connected to my body but they were mm -hmm. both running on two separate lanes. Mm -hmm. um, and so I did that for some years. I left school, I think I was maybe 20, uh, maybe 20, 21 at the time. Mm -hmm. And and I stayed in that space that's really a blur for me. I don't know if you know anything mm -hmm. about it, uh, depression or anxiety, but it does mm -hmm. something to your memory. Mm -hmm. um, so from the time I was 20 to 25, I don't mm -hmm. really have a lot of mm -hmm. recollection of what happened there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> it's it's you know it 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 makes me sad sometimes um when i think about it but i don't have a lot of memory of what happened in between 20 and 25 um and what i actually did uh what i accomplished in those in those years and i'm sure that i did something mm -hmm. um but it's sort of painful to go back and and think about the times and then maybe and feel like i wasted time or that i lost mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. um just being depressed uh, mm -hmm. and so in the midst of my depression after i left school um, I ended up, um, I, I know I did some community theater in that time. I know I did a couple of shows. Um, and I was also thinking I was trying to be an, an R&B artist at the time. I was trying to, to make some music, but mm -hmm. nothing was even, I was just floating through, floating through, through space. Yeah. Floating through. Yeah. Um, and so I believe after that, there was a time period where I, um, I'll say in like 2009, 2010, um, you know, Twitter was a thing. And so I, I became immersed in, I think I was working at Verizon at the time I was selling cell phones and became immersed in, in Twitter and, and found some, you know, some friends and people that were pop culture um, uh, bloggers. And mm -hmm. um, I really just gravitated towards these mm -hmm. people and, and mm -hmm. developed some friendships via Twitter. And I thought, you know, like, this is cool, like, but I'm not a pop culture blogger. I'm not, that's not what I do. So what mm -hmm. can I do mm -hmm. that I know? What do I know do that I, know? I can create a space for? Mm -hmm. um, and that was, that was, oh, oh shoot, I'm so sorry. That's no worries. Um, let me put that on. I thought I had it on Do Not Disturb. I have it on personal and not work. Um, there we go. I'm sorry. No worries. Um, but I thought, what do I know? What mm. do I uh, have the the knowledge of? And what can mm. I create a space mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. beyond pop culture? Because that just wasn't my thing. I wasn't a, a blogger in that way. I didn't want to talk about celebrities' business in that way, mm -hmm. um, which was fine and cool. And it was you know becoming popular at that time. It was fine. You know, I had several friends that did that. So I sort of took that model. And, and used it for theater. Mm -hmm. It was difficult for me to find material, especially mm -hmm. when I was in college, mm -hmm. uh, that I could sink my teeth into, that, mm -hmm. that were, where were the people that looked like me, the voices that sounded like mine, the, mm -hmm. the things that moved me. And I was like, mm -hmm. well, why, why isn't this all in just one place? Why am I scouring through you know, uh, CD booklets and, mm -hmm. and Playbill trying to find mm -hmm. black faces? Mm -hmm. It should be in one place. And so one, one place. day I had you know just sort of bought the domain name and I had a little bit of experience coding, you know, from doing my space. And also I was a part of my mother had uh, put me in a program some years earlier called the Black Data Processing Association. Mm -hmm. So that was where they taught us how to code and build websites. And mm -hmm. I went to competitions and, and mm -hmm. uh, was a part of that program for some years of, of mm -hmm. learning how to uh, use Visual Basic and HTML mm -hmm. and, and coding. Mm -hmm. um, 
And I even won a computer at one point in time, mm. you know, doing that, then doing that competition because I mm. set my mind to so I'm going to win this computer. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, I, I took that knowledge and, and built a website and built a mm. blog mm. and, and started to um, blog about black people in theater. Mm. And what did I mm. see and what did I know was mm. happening? And um, that's sort of how that came about. I bought the domain name in 2011, in December, 2011. And I just began and then sort of sort of stopped it for a second because I got a, a I got a message from Kenneth D. Ard. Um, I'll never forget it. Kenneth D. Ard sent me a Facebook message. Um, and Kenneth D. Ard is one of the original cast members of Smokey Joe's Cafe. Mm. I had recently done Smokey Joe's Cafe at the community mm. theater. Mm. And I um, so I I knew that that DVD backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. um, I knew everything about the songs, about the people. Mm -hmm. I knew their mm -hmm. names. I knew mm -hmm. I knew everything that you could possibly mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And he found my my website and mm -hmm. he messaged me on Facebook and said, "My beautiful blackness, mm -hmm. thank you mm -hmm. for what you're doing. We need mm -hmm. this. We need." Mm -hmm. And it just it it fueled me and gave me chills that it scared me. Yes, uh -huh. and I stopped. Uh -huh. I said, mm -hmm. I, I have to make sure that I'm doing this with the utmost quality. And, mm -hmm. and Kenneth Diard is seeing this, then I need to make sure that it, it looks pristine. And so I, I, can't, mm -hmm. I can't keep doing it right now until mm -hmm. I can get to, I'm not in New York. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's mm -hmm. happening. And so I sort of got a little scared of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I would, I would go back and forth with that because at this time I'm still dealing with depression and anxiety, mm -hmm. but this was something that was sort of bringing me out. It was keeping me alive. Mm -hmm. yes, um, God, yes, And yeah. And, and so that was 2011. And by the time 2012 came, um, about maybe almost a year later, I was still trying to figure it out. And I had made some connections via Twitter and online mm -hmm. of people seeing the platform. Mm -hmm. um, and then I ran into Billy Porter. I lost my job um, the day before, but I had tickets to see Kinky Boots in mm -hmm. Chicago. Mm -hmm. And I still went. I said, well, I'm mm -hmm. going to spend my last few dollars. I'm going to see this show and I'm going to brunch. And I had me a couple of drinks and yeah. I was feeling good about myself. And, <laughs> Um, yeah, I had just, just turned maybe 25 at that time, just turned mm -hmm. 25. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I don't care what's going on. So mm -hmm. I went and I went to Chicago and Billy mm -hmm. Porter, um, we were, it was only you know, four, three or four, you know, three of us or four of us total, but three of my other friends were with me that we had hung out all that day and went to go see the show. We were the only ones at the stage door. Um, and Billy Porter came out and he said, I knew it was, I knew it was some of us out there because I could hear y'all so clear because we were shouting, you know, this is kinky boots. Like, you know, yes. Billy Porter was coming back to the stage. He hadn't been on yes. stage in a long time. And so yeah. I had to see this show. Mm. Um, he had inspired me so much throughout, you know, mm. my, my years of, you know, doing musical theater. Um, mm. And so I had to see this show. And so I did. Mm. And, um, you know, meeting him and I told him about the platform that I had created and I, you know, uh, told him what I wanted to do. And he said, well, oh, well, you need to get to New York. If that's what you want to do. You need to get there. Mm -hmm. And that sort of just sparked something in me. Um, I also had a ticket to a plane ticket to LA. Um, me and Michael Kilgore were really good friends at the time. And um, I had a plane ticket to LA. He was in the Book of Mormon tour and that was out in LA. And so I went to go stay with him for a week in LA um, and saw that um, and saw that production. And he was introducing me as Broadway black. And I said, what mm. you can't, you can't do that because I don't have a website right now. It's not like everything's not, you know, really up and running like mm -hmm. that. Like you mm -hmm. can't just keep, he said, no, that's who you are. Yeah. You have something that's great. What it is. Yes. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, a couple of weeks after that, after I came back from LA, cause in order for me to go to LA, I had to sell both my flat screen TVs. I had to mm -hmm. sell my TVs mm -hmm. cause I didn't have any money. I'd lost my job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up selling all my furniture when I came back from LA. So my mm -hmm. furniture, my boss that fired me, bought my car for me because he knew I needed, it. he was like my brother. He had given me my first job and I had worked with him for years. Um, and he ended up firing me, but he ended up buying my car because he knew I needed the money. Mm -hmm. Coming to find out some years later, the car broke down, maybe like a week after I left for New York and he never even told me. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I went to, yeah, I went to New York, uh, with no plan, no job, no anything. I didn't have a place to live or anything. Um, I tweeted out and said, Hey, if anybody knows of a room I can rent when I get to New York, I'm, I'm getting on the plane right now. One way ticket. Let me know. By the time I landed, somebody had answered my tweet and was in my DMs and said, Hey, what time do you land? I can come and pick you up from the airport. I have an extra room. I live in Yonkers. Mm. Um, and you can stay with me until you get on mm. your feet. Mm. Didn't know this person from, mm -hmm. from Adam or Eve did not mm. know them. Mm -hmm. um, but they were from the Midwest. They were from Ohio. And so they had mm -hmm. been following me on Twitter at some, at that mm -hmm. point. 
Um, and so they came to pick me up from um, from the airport. Um, I, you know, moved into that room. I didn't have anything but, a, you know, a little air mattress and in my, mm-hmm. my bags. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was ready to go find a job. Mm-hmm. Um, they told me, like, just rest. Like, you don't have to pay anything until you find a job. Well, I don't operate like that. Exactly. I went out and found a job the next day. That's right. Yeah. Um, it was right after Hurricane Sandy. Mm-hmm. I found a job at a bar, bartending of, um, at a place in Chelsea called Forager mm-hmm. City Table. And I ended up um, meeting a guy at, at the, the hostess stand. He was a host at the restaurant. And that ended up being my boyfriend for about four years. So mm-hmm. from that day on, we were inseparable. So I landed in New York. And within three days, I had a place to live, a job, and a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. And um, that was, you know, I just felt like I was supposed to be here. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, that was my experience moving to New York. And, and, all, and still, yet still, trying to figure out what I'm doing. You know, how am I, how am I going to survive? How am I going to make this platform uh, uh, thrive? And Mm -hmm. what does it mean to work on this Mm -hmm. side of the industry and not be performing? I didn't know. And so, yeah, I began that journey. Yeah. Drew, thank you for that um, epic move through of your story of how you got to New York. You've already answered like 10 of my future questions. So thank you very much. I appreciate (laughs) you laying it all out. I also want to just take a few seconds to acknowledge a couple of things. One, thank God for Kenneth, I think is his name. Is it? Is that mm, the Kenneth first name? DR. Yeah. Yeah. Kenneth, thank God for Billy. Mm-hmm. And thank God for you and Michael Kilgore. Mm-hmm. And thank mm-hmm. God for you because the common denominator in all of those moments is you. Hmm. Mm-hmm. And the most important thing that I'm hearing is you saying, and I and I took that as fuel. I took that as a spark or as a reason to go into the next day or to to move, take this thing and move. Like you did that, you did that. And yeah. thank God for those other people, Drew. But that's the common denominator. Like we all get told things all the time about what we should do, but we don't always listen. <laughs> yeah. And you listened to all of those moments and you trusted yourself and you had faith. So thank you for that. And I just wanted to carve that out and celebrate it. And another thing I wanna um, thank you for personally um, in this moment is uh, for introducing the word depression into this space. Um, And really being honest and transparent about that, because I think that's a conversation that we don't often have and don't know how to have and are too afraid to have or whatever the thing is. And so I just want to acknowledge the fact that that is in this space. And I'm glad that it is in this space and it is welcome in this space. And I just um, I really appreciate that. And I I appreciate that. And I also want to just say that um, because of my anxiety and my depression that I've dealt with for and it's been debilitating. Mm-hmm. at many, many times in my life. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, without, without God and the experiences that I've had and the people he sent my way and into my life, um, mm-hmm. I would not be here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I cannot talk about my life and my, my, my uh, trajectory and the things that I've gone through and the things that I've accomplished without right. acknowledging um, um, my mental state. That's right. And how I how things were filtered through that. That's right. How That's my right. decisions yeah. were filtered yeah. through that. How my body and, and how I moved mm-hmm. um, was so affected mm-hmm. uh, by by that. Um, especially with not having the resources or the know-how yes. to get help. Yes. And yes. literally, I am just now getting the proper care and help yes. Yes. Um, that I that I need and that is allowing me to thrive. Mm-hmm. I genuinely LA do not know how I've made it thus far. Yay, God. I should not be here. Yay, God. I should not be here. Yeah, Literally, God. I should not be here. I, I didn't, I made my first suicide attempt in 2019. Mm. Years after I moved to New York. Mm-hmm, right. Years. Mm-hmm. I literally just went through a situation with where I brought somebody into my company because I desperately needed help that I couldn't, mm-hmm. I was not sustaining well. Mm-hmm. And they took advantage of me. Just this mm-hmm. just happened. This I'm just, just happened. getting to, I'm just getting to a place mm-hmm. where I am okay to stand on my own two feet. Today is I'm 50 days sober. Yeah. 50 days sober today where I made a decision that I was going to stop self-medicating, but it was because I had went through eight, nine months of trying different medications and going mm-hmm. through therapy. And, mm-hmm. and this past year has been such a transformative time mm-hmm. for me, but somebody mm-hmm. caught me in a place of mm-hmm. vulnerability, mm-hmm. but oh, but God, oh, but God. I have to tell okay. you about that LA. I, I, oh. have to, I have to tell you about Ooh. that. Just, 
Mm. Um, um, you know, the pandemic really uh, mm. um, did a number on all of us. Mm-hmm. But I lost everything. Mm-hmm. I lost everything. Um, um, any type of little money or sustainability that I had, everything gone. And so coming yes. back into the industry and knowing that after what we went through with the racial reckoning, with, especially mm-hmm. within the industry, mm-hmm. um, that sort of sickened me to my stomach in a way, mm-hmm. just because mm-hmm. I was seeing people use uh, um, blackness to profit. That's right. Um, they were using their stories and their their oppressions to profit and to gain yes. notoriety or mm-hmm. um, uh, elevate themselves or elevate mm-hmm. their stories because now it was popular. Mm-hmm. But for somebody that had held on to those stories for eight years that held them yes. in private and secret, yes. Yes. Uh, it felt disgusting and gross mm-hmm. to me because mm-hmm. you still allowed those things mm-hmm. to happen to you and to other mm-hmm. people because you mm-hmm. didn't want to lose work or you didn't want to be labeled difficult and i get that but now that you have nothing to lose now now that it's advantageous for you to speak Uh up Uh this is your opportunity and you want to Mm -hmm. use that to to build and 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 you know we all have to Mm -hmm. we all have to get to freedom um any way that we can and so i can't um uh, knock that i'm glad that people are speaking up and speaking out Mm -hmm. um but it it was a difficult process for me to Mm -hmm. to uh, see all of that happen where mm-hmm. somebody that had, you know, been ostracized, had mm-hmm. been uh, microaggressed and macroaggressed throughout my time building this platform and, uh, you know, been pigeonholed and shoved into a corner and and used and, and abused and, and uh, uh, lied on and cheated and, um, um, you know, nickel and dimed and, and mm-hmm. nitpicked um, mm-hmm. through those times, it was difficult to see mm-hmm. people begin to use that to prosper. Um, and I just didn't have any, I didn't have any uh, uh, care to do that. Mm. I had to separate myself. I said, I'll only have time and space for black joy, which is how the yes. Antonios came to mm-hmm. came to be. A, um, mm-hmm. Because I said, I, I, I can't do this with y'all. I can't talk. Mm-hmm. And, you know, mm-hmm. I started to develop the Antonios before George Floyd happened. Um, I was already knee deep in that, that process of building that mm-hmm. because I said, mm-hmm. I can't do all these stories about, you know, my wig ain't right. And I got Michael mm-hmm. addressed by the makeup lady at, mm-hmm. at this Broadway show. And this mm-hmm. casting director said this, mm-hmm. I said, I'm not doing, I'm not amplifying those things. I'm not doing that right. with y'all. Right. All right. I have space for is black joy. joy. So what can I create? Yes. What can I create that gives <clears throat> black joy? And I said, mm-hmm. this is a perfect time for me to do a, an award show. Everything is digital. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be in person. I don't have to be right. this large extravagant thing. Yeah. Um, it could be digital. And what I, what do I know? I know digital content because I've been doing do. it for eight years. That's right. That's right. Um, um, and so that's where that came to be. And, I, and mm. when George Floyd happened, it, it sort of allowed me to have an insular space. It had allowed mm. me to be insulated from the outside world and focus on Black joy. And that saved me. I was yeah. actually in Alabama. Yeah. Um, I was staying with family in Birmingham, Alabama at the time, mm. at the beginning of the mm. pandemic, because I had booked, uh, um, you know, as an actor, I had sort of gotten to a place where I want to start performing again. I'm tired of, of, of being behind the scenes and not really doing what it is that I love and what I'm passionate about. And I had done um, a concert at, at Carnegie Hall with Titus Burgess. We had sung All Sun Time in February of uh, 2020. And, and that sort of fueled me. because So when I was in rehearsal for that show, I was auditioning. We were in rehearsals in a certain space and, and at Ripley mm-hmm. Greer. And so there were auditions mm-hmm. happening. So on my break, I would walk around and see what auditions were happening. Yes. And I would go on audition. Yes. And I had ended yes. up booking yes. a whole year's worth of shows. Yes. And got two weeks into the first show. I was playing Curtis and Dream Girls in, in Virginia mm-hmm. and got two weeks into that first show and everything shut down. So I was devastated. Yeah. Went to Alabama because I didn't feel comfortable coming back to, to New York. Stayed with some family for a couple of months in Alabama, developed the Antonios, mm-hmm. got some 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 inspiration within myself and some joy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. came back to the city. Mm-hmm. Um, and and but then I still struggled, you know, because mm-hmm. the industry wasn't opening up anytime That's soon. Right. That's right. And so, That's you right. know, a year and a half of not being in a good, good place and, and then coming back to the industry, I was desperate for help. In mm-hmm. September of 2021, 20, uh, I was looking for someone to help me uh, build this platform and sort of help me uh, um, get the structure right because I'd never really had, nobody teaches mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. That's right. how to build a business. That's right. That's um, especially right. in the theater industry, nobody right. teaches you what, you, right. what That's you're right. worth or what you should be That's charging right. or That's how right. you can... Uh, um, how you can profit and make money from your mm-hmm. ideas and your work mm-hmm. because you're working. Mm-hmm. But then mm-hmm. I was going to events to eat before the mm-hmm. pandemic. Yay! I was living on the train at a, a certain point in time, mm-hmm. um, looking good. Mm-hmm. You know, I was showering at the gym, you mm-hmm. know, 
mm-hmm. um, that sort of thing. And, and, yes. you know, at, 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 and this is before, you know, I was, you know, cause, uh, Planet Fitness, you know, showering at Planet Fitness and Crunch mm-hmm. Gym and, and mm-hmm. you know, showering at, at my job at, at the uh-huh. sink, you know, getting there yes. early and, and yes. carrying my suitcase everywhere and yes. sleeping on a yes. train and yes. that sort of thing. Um, it, it was a trying time because so, nobody would tell me mm-hmm. how to structure the business. And so right. I made a lot of mistakes with that. And so I didn't want to come back into uh, this industry after the pandemic mm-hmm. um, with without finding that structure. And so mm-hmm. I thought that if I found someone that sort of, I thought new business, they would be able mm-hmm. to help me. And I brought somebody in as executive director to my company. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and they had the whole intention of taking the company from me from the very beginning. Um, they had the whole intention of trying to manipulate me mm-hmm. and use my mental health against me mm-hmm. um, to, to take my company from underneath me, pull the rug from mm-hmm. underneath me. And I ended up catching it mm-hmm. right before Mm. um mm. it happened i ended up catching it right before mm. um um everything was ripped from underneath me mm. because you know god will always give you the intuition and he, it was like something ain't right mm. something just don't feel right mm. um it feels wrong mm. and and i ended up doing some some investigation and, and going through some emails and talking mm. to some of my clients and um but this was also the time where i was trying a different medication that had me uh, you know, experiencing great insomnia where I was up mm-hmm. for days at a time and then I would crash and be asleep literally for two days. Mm-hmm. Um, I would be asleep for, for 20 hours at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just wasn't working for me at that time. And this person took advantage of me uh, and, and my, my mental state at the time. And I was very much so open and, and forthright about uh, where I was mentally, mm-hmm. where the business was, what state of the mm-hmm. finances, you know, what state mm-hmm. the finances were in, because uh, mm-hmm. we had just come out of a pandemic. Mm-hmm. So I am in debt, thousands of mm-hmm. dollars worth of debt, mm-hmm. um, and I need help structuring mm-hmm. it. But God mm-hmm. showed me that mm-hmm. you don't need anybody but him. Mm-hmm. 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 I didn't need anybody but him. I thought that I wasn't worthy or smart enough or able mm-hmm. or capable enough mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. do what it is that I was mm-hmm. looking for. Mm-hmm. So I was looking to try to outsource it when God was like, no, let me show you. You have everything inside of you, you that you need. I've already given it to you. Yes, yes. I've yes. already given it to you. And that was sort of the you. catalyst for me uh, figuring things out and also mm-hmm. me becoming sober because mm-hmm. it was now at a point where somebody's trying to take what's mine and mm-hmm. now I have to step up to the plate. Yes, I have to, to make sure that I do the work that that's necessary in order to keep what to God has present. given me. Yes, yeah, be present. Be present. And, yes. um, and I didn't even know that that's what I needed because, that's right. um, uh, you know, it's sort of God has sort of planted, he had planted it in a way, it planted a seed. I, a friend of mine was going to AA meetings and invited me to come along with them because uh, they were qualifying that week and they were going to be telling their testimony. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I said, okay, well, I'll come and support you. And I went to the AA meeting and then, you know, some things resonated with me, but I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I'm not no alcoholic. I'm not no, you know, I might be, you know, you know, have a, a problem with drugs and, and, you know, uh, self-medicating, mm-hmm. but I'm not really alcoholic, but mm-hmm. I left that AA meeting and went and bought two bottles of wine and came home and, and did, you know, some drugs and, and smoked a little weed and, and did a little cocaine because I had mm-hmm. some left. I said, well, if I'm going to be mm-hmm. sober, if I'm going to try to go to these AA meetings, I need to do all the mm-hmm. drugs I got in my house first. Mm-hmm. And while I did all the drugs I had in my house, mm-hmm. I booked a ticket to Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. Book, booked a ticket to Las Vegas. I had a friend that lives there and I also had a friend that was going to be there that weekend for her birthday. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh, I want to go be around my friends. I need to be around my, mm-hmm. my people. And I was mm-hmm. feeling good. I was high on drugs and I bought this plane ticket. I said, yeah, I'm going to be around my people. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that happened. And the next day I woke up and said, why did I spend all that money to go to, money I don't got to mm-hmm. go to Vegas? Why mm-hmm. would I do that? Mm-hmm. Um, and so the trip was coming up and I was thinking like, Lord, I don't, I shouldn't go to Vegas. And then, you know, God put on my heart. He said, I want you to be sober. Mm-hmm. And, and I had, you know, my, my uh, therapist and my prescriber at the time um, was put, about to put me on new medication. And she said, I really want you to, and this is a black woman. I had got a new prescriber and it was a black woman. And she was like, I really want you to not do any of the things that you've been doing, you know, to self-medicate mm-hmm. with these drugs. We don't know what they will do what the stimulants that I was on. So um, she would put me on an antidepressant and an ADHD medication. And she said, please don't do anything, any alcohol or anything with it so we can see how it, how you operate with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I said, I so desperately want to be well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I so desperately mm-hmm. want to be well. Mm-hmm. This was just 50 days ago. Mm-hmm. I so mm-hmm. desperately want to be mm-hmm. well, mm-hmm. but I will, I will do whatever it takes. Mm-hmm. And I said, I'm going to be sober. Mm-hmm. And then I realized in three days, I was supposed to be in, in Vegas. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Who goes to Vegas to be sober? Mm-hmm. That Vegas is Sin City. Mm-hmm. It's not the place you go when you're sober, when you're mm-hmm. trying to you know, start a sobriety journey. Mm-hmm. But I went anyway. God told mm-hmm. me to go anyway. Mm-hmm. I went and um, I was there and I, I, you know, was committed to my sobriety. And then I was doing some research to uh, get my company in, in, in good standing and, and make sure that it was, you know, I was starting to build a structure. I'd found uh, an accountant that had found a, a lawyer mm-hmm. um, to give me some guidance. I'd also found uh, a, a, a business development person mm-hmm. that helped me sort of get to start to develop what the structure should look like. Um, and what did I want to, to sell? What was my menu? And so we were mm-hmm. looking through that and, and looking through the legalities of what it means to, because I, in 10 years, I hadn't trademarked my business. Mm-hmm. Didn't have the money to do that. Mm-hmm. Didn't have the money to, to, everybody just knew it was mine. Mm-hmm. It wasn't mm-hmm. a thing. But mm-hmm. as I was looking up the, the company, um, the, the person that I had just stopped working with that I brought in and, and to help me develop and the, it, the relationship ended badly because they were trying to, um, um, you know, take my company from me. We also found invoices with their personal bank account information on it. I found mm-hmm. uh, emails where they were disparaging me and my mental health and telling mm-hmm. clients that I was lazy and mm-hmm. um, just manipulating me in, in, a, in a really poor way. And it, it, it really hurt me, mm-hmm. um, but found out in while I was in Vegas that this person had um, filed for my trademark underneath their name mm. um, and used my intellectual property, my logo to file mm. for my trademark. Mm. Um, and that was devastating to me. Mm. Mm. I was very angry, but God had already set me up to where I was mm. one, I was sober. Mm-hmm. Two, I wasn't in the city, so I couldn't go and harm them or do anything mm. out of pocket. And three, that morning he had given me a song. Oh God, thank you. He had given me a song that was so deeply resonated in my spirit by the time I found out that night Mm. that it just all clicked for me. That morning I woke up and, you know, I was with my friend, uh, Mickey, who lives in Vegas and me and her went to college together. We went to Ball State together Mm. and we've been friends ever since I was the the, uh, man of honor in her wedding with her Mm. wife. Mm. And I, um, in college, we sang this song. I led this song within a, a gospel choir. And she was a part of that choir. I said, Mickey, remember that time I sang Secret Place by Karen Clark Shear? Mm. And I was singing it that morning. And she's like, yeah, and you messed up the words. And I said, well, I know the words now. And I was mm. singing the words and I was singing it all that day. This world sometimes seems cruel and cold and pain doth pierce my very soul. I found a place, oh, a secret place, a place that I can go. I'm going to cry thinking about it. Mm -hmm. For you shall hide me in your tabernacle from the rain and storm. Mm -hmm. And even when my enemies pursue me, you keep me safe from harm oh thank you god Mm. that resonated in my spirit so hard Mm. la all Mm. that day and so when i found out that this person had filed for my trademark Mm. that they were trying to rip my company from underneath Mm. me and take it that's what i leaned on Mm. i said oh god you set me up You knew that this this had already happened before I even booked a ticket to go to Vegas. You knew that this had already happened. So you set me up to one, be sober, to two, find out when I'm not even in the city and to three, give me something to hold on to in the midst of trial. Uh. And when that happened to me, I sat in that bed for maybe a day and a half or so because I was so distraught. I was so angry, but there was nothing I could do. Mm -hmm. I still had about five days left in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And I cried and I prayed and I cried and I prayed. Mm. And God said, just get up and do the work. Mm-hmm. And, and in, in the midst of that, this person tried to publicly destroy me with my reputation, mm-hmm. my character. And God said, just be still. Mm-hmm. 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 Be still. Mm-hmm. And I've been still for 50 days. Hey, God. Oh, God. Um, yes, Drew. Yes, my friend. I um, feel so inclined to say to you that I thought initially the inspiration behind this conversation was to say say thank you for being such an inspiration to so many people um, and for continuing the work of Broadway Black. But I also now wanna say, 
let's celebrate these 50 days. Now we're celebrating these 50 days yeah. and the one day at a time of it, of the 50 days, the one day at a time. It's not <laughs> easy. Atlanta. I know, I know my friend, I know, and it's I don't know, easy. and I know, but mm -hmm. I know that it's one day at a time and I know that it's worthy of celebration. And I really drew, I mean that from the core of my soul, yeah, I celebrate, I celebrate every single thing you just talked about. And I also want to say, um, you said, if I may offer this, you said, uh, yeah. you know, God set me up and he, and this happened to me for a reason. No, baby, it happened for you. <laughs> yeah. It happened for you. Yeah. Right. And just that shift in thinking, that subtle mm -hmm. shift, it didn't happen to you. It happened for, for you. me. Hey, yeah. God, you see. And so I just want to thank you for, um, sharing this gorgeous, gorgeous. And it's still story. happening for me. And it's still happening for you. And it's going to continue to happen yeah. for us. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's been the shift that I've had to make. Right. Yeah. Why is this? But wait, well, wait, but why is this? And blah, blah, blah. No, it's happening for you, LA. Yeah. You know, and, and so for just others, a, because and for others. Yeah. Before others, because I, 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 I thank God um, I've, I've accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you forget, especially yes, in right. the midst of trial and in the That's midst right. of going through things, you might forget That's right. That's right. all that God has brought you through and, and right. allowed you to be and do. That's right. I have done some amazing things. Yes, you fucking have. Yes, you have. Yes, you have. I have and been yes. touched by and influenced to, uh, influenced to many people. That's right. Um, and I'm reminded often. Yes. Um, and today I'm reminded by you, LA. I appreciate yes. you. Yes. That's the um, whole purpose of this. And I have to hold, I have to hold yes. on to that. Yes. Um, that I'm not what I've gone through. I'm not that's what that's right. Um, um, I'm not what other people have done. That's right. To me. That's right. I am a, a combination of all the greatness that God sees. Yes. Um, God. In me. Yeah. Yes, and, God. and what yes, He's God. provided. Um, because the idea is God's. He just given, He just gave it to me. That's right. That's right. Yes. And I'm, and I'm honored and trusted I'm honored. And so that, I tried yeah. to, yeah, he's yeah. trusted me uh, with that. And, and I do my best to be mm -hmm. a good steward of it. That's right. Um, That's right. To operate in a place of excellence, to operate in a That's place right. of love, of, love. of intention. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm intentionally uh, uh, operating and, and moving um to celebrate this community, to uplift this yes, community. Yes. And not just anything just because it's black. Right. I've all I've had to say that multiple times too, that yes. I just don't support and do mm -hmm. anything just because it's black. Mm -hmm. Everything black on Broadway ain't Broadway black. Mm -hmm. Because the intention ain't always there mm -hmm. um, to to uplift people, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. um, um, be a a motivation or influence of, of, of great cause to people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and I have to be mindful of that, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but also I have to take on what comes with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm very happy. I can say that now. Yes. That I'm very happy with where I am and what I've experienced. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, sometimes life ain't fair. That's right. life, ain't fa life ain't fair, but favor ain't fair either. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I'm favored. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm very favored. And so I'm yes, grateful for that. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yes, you are. Drew, we can go on, you and I. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I just, I thank you so much. I, in the spirit really quickly of lightheartedness, I just want to ask, I've been doing this thing this season where I'm just asking folks to tell me a, a few of your favorite things. Like what's your favorite food or your favorite city or your favorite song or like favorite, just anything favorite, fun. Um, my favorite. Oh, okay. Um, what is my favorite? My favorite food is sweet potatoes. Mm. I love a sweet potato, mm. like a sweet potato yes. souffle, a sweet potato. Yes. Oh, give me anything sweet potato and I'm, I'm in heaven. Yes. Um, my favorite, um, uh, let me think. Um, my favorite thing to do is, is get a massage mm -hmm. and a haircut. Tomorrow's my mm -hmm. haircut day. So that's why I yes. look so crazy but tomorrow's my haircut day yeah um, and so I love to get a massage and a haircut mm. and, and you know get my nails done it's about time for a new manicure too but get my nails done and, and just take yes. care of myself that makes yes. me feel good that's my favorite yeah. thing to do um and also let me think um my favorite uh my favorite song right now I would say um would be uh Peace Be Still 
Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. it's a Vanessa Bell Armstrong song, but I'm, mm-hmm. I'm listening to a current uh, rendition by, uh, I want to say his name is Kalante Gavin. Mm-hmm. Um, that just really just resonates in my in my spirit. So mm-hmm. those are some of my favorite things. I don't know what else. Uh, my favorite musical of all time, I say this all the time, is Carolina Change. Mm-hmm. Uh, the original uh, production is like my ultimate favorite. Uh, mm-hmm. The radio from that mm-hmm. from that show, uh, Marva Hicks, Ramona Keller, and Tracy Chapman, and uh, Tanya mm-hmm. Pinkin in that show, and a young mm-hmm. Ben Platt. And mm-hmm. um, so that's like some of my favorite things. I love uh, I love musical theater and I love theater as a whole. So. Uh, yeah, those are my, some of my favorite things. I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, I'm just curious. Do you have a favorite city? A favorite city? Um, I don't think that I do. I think that I love New York City. Um, it's home. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call it a favorite. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. I maybe need to travel a little bit more to, to find a favorite. I need to a little bit, have a little bit more experience. To totally. Yeah. Understood. All right. The way I like to wrap these conversations up, Drew, is by asking three questions. Mm-hmm. The first one being, what does it mean to you to be celebrated? Um, this, the acknowledgement of the work that I do, that it's impacted someone, that it's influenced someone for the better, mm-hmm. um, that it's inspired them to do what they're doing. Uh, um, yeah, that's a celebration to me. Um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't know. It's just... It's just um, just a simple thank you does so much for people. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Just being seen mm-hmm. does so much. I don't need people to validate me because mm-hmm. I validate myself and mm-hmm. God validates what I do. Mm-hmm. But just to feel seen and not mm-hmm. invisible mm-hmm. Um, is a big, a big thing. It's a big deal. Mm-hmm. And it, it feels wonderful to be celebrated in that way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. What or who do you celebrate? Ah, this community, this uh, Black theater artists have man so much to endure and and uh they're up against so much each and every day trying to uh be a part of an art form that wasn't built for them mm-hmm. um that you know or i should say an art form but an industry that wasn't built for them mm-hmm. um however i think that we influence the art form better and greater than any other culture mm-hmm. um and, and that's just my opinion mm-hmm. um however uh, i think there are things to back that up but uh, um yeah, I, that's this community is is mm-hmm. what um, I like to celebrate, and the people that um, influence me, like Billy, uh, like Lilius, mm-hmm. like Audra, um, mm-hmm. Lashans. You know, these are people mm-hmm. that um, I'm, you know, thinking thinking on it now. I'm honored and and so privileged to be able to call friends and to be able to pick up the mm-hmm. phone and say, "Hey, uh, mm-hmm. Auntie Lilius, I need." I need you to do this for me or, or, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. Miss McDonald, can I, can I, mm-hmm. I just ask your advice on this? You know, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm very privileged and honored to be able to have those, uh, people that inspired me as, mm-hmm. as colleagues in a way, mm-hmm. or, or, uh, mentors in a way, mm-hmm. um, and for them to be so giving and, mm-hmm. and, um, even my peers, you know, people that are coming up in the industry, you know, Adrian Warrens and the, uh, um, the Amber Mons and, and the Danye R. Loves mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, yeah, the people that are, are influencing, you know, in the current day mm-hmm. um, and are building their careers, you know, right now as we as we walk together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I celebrate them. Mm-hmm. I lift them up mm-hmm. um, and I lift up the people that are coming behind us mm-hmm. that are in school still. Mm-hmm. Um, I celebrate them for mm-hmm. for wanting to be a part of, of this industry and, and still finding the joy because, you know, it's, it can be uh difficult sometimes to to not get jaded especially when you've been here i've been here for 10 years now that's right um and so to see the the green spirit and to see the Mm -hmm. the bright eyes and the uh people still having dreams and being joyful about you Mm -hmm. know being here Mm -hmm. it's amazing it keeps me fueled so it's amazing oh drew oh so beautifully said thank you thank you for that um Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that resonates very deeply for me. Thank you so much. Um, and finally, what do you do to celebrate you? Ooh, um, what do I do? I think that in order for me to celebrate me, I have to look at me. Mm-hmm. I've been taking more time to do that each day, mm-hmm. looking at myself and um, meeting myself where I am, yes. you know, 
um, that's that's the best that I can do to celebrate mm-hmm. myself is meeting myself and where I am and giving myself grace. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that's the only reason why I've made it to these these fifty days is allowing myself grace. Yes. Um, so that's my celebration, the grace that oh, I give myself. Oh God, yes. Yeah. Yes, Drew. Oh, my friend, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being an inspiration. Thank you for this conversation. Um, I I love you. We love you, Drew. And that's really what I wanted to say to you today was thank you. I love you. We love you. We thank you. And please continue to love on yourself and take care of yourself. And just know that we have you. We really, really, really love you. And we got your back. You are not alone. And I love you too, brother. Your beautiful, beautiful journey. Thank Um, you for the self-reflection for today that was absolutely um, yeah yeah I didn't, I didn't know I was going to be saying and telling all but you know you, you let God lead you in the way that you think he should go and yeah um, yeah yeah so I, absolutely. I, I divulged a lot today <laughs> I, I mean yeah yeah this and I appreciate that and I understand and respect the vulnerability that it requires and um you know for me with these conversations it really is just like I'm holding space for you and whatever that holding looks like you know yeah. um um, so I just wanted to, you know, yes, thank you for, for being open. Um, are you, you feel, do you feel good about everything that we've laid out? Do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am an open book. When I tell you that, uh, can't no man hold over me what God has already forgiven me. That's for. right. That's exactly. Hey, God. Yes. Yeah. What yes, I've forgiven yes, yes, myself yes, yes. for. Um, yeah. so I talk about my story freely. There you go. And openly because it's mine to tell. And because it's yours to tell. Yeah. It is yours to tell. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. I love you, Andrew. And I'm so glad that our paths have crossed. I'm so happy that I'm Same. walking this earth and in this community at the same time as you. Again, your presence, your leadership, your yeah. creativity, your artistry, your beauty, your humanity. <laughs> right? Because I think we sometimes get lost and get caught up in the cuteness of it all. Yeah. But a part of what I'm trying to do with this platform is to say, there's a human behind the beauty. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, and, and I think that's what you shared with us today in so many gorgeous ways. And I just want to say, I celebrate all of that. And I thank you for that. And I see it all. And um, I've always felt a special connection to you. We have very similar um, experiences in our journey. And every time I see you, I always feel connected to you. Yeah. Um, and today I understand why um, in a lot more uh, ways. So thank Amen. you, Drew. I love you. you. I'm here for you and wrapping big hugs around you. And I'll see you around soon, hopefully. Definitely will. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you. Same, brother. Love you. Talk to you soon. I love you too. All right. Bye-bye.